Welcome back to Cephas Unscripted, episode whatever. Absolutely nothing nothing prepared. Nothing prepared. We just came on, we pressed play, and we're just going to chat some rugby. Brett, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, I don't think we've ever prepared for an episode. We just know what the topic normally is. Um, I don't think I've ever prepared for an episode. I don't know about you two, but I've never prepared. Um, should we have prepared? No, no, I think there's enough to talk about. If we we can scrape the barrel deep enough and find something to talk about. Brevan, how are you doing, man? End of, end of the exams for you? Excited? Yeah, it's no, getting, what are we doing? Uh, I'm excited because it's my final year. So, I mean, last bit of exams and then that's me done. So, super excited with that. Uh, but, yeah, crazy time of the year. But like you said, um, time to just put press record and talk whatever we we want at this point you know because obviously like you say wednesdays are for our fun episodes but i think we should we've not done a little sit down and chat about absolutely everything under the sun um in a while so i'm keen yeah i mean let's let's not beat around the bush let's let's get right into it uh, obviously massive news brett sad day for you favorite player out injured previous episode was for me cry time my favorite player also the best player in the world some people actually take that very seriously when i said it like i was i was reading the comments i was like like bro i believe he's the best player in the world right but i know no one else is gonna think that i like i think he has the potential for it but people have been deeping that so much it was like oh my word just get off my back seriously speaking of comment section um I saw that there's a little uh, certain someone there. I'm not familiar with who this person is, but um, I got a bit of a fan. Um, she keeps saying, um, "Yay, Brett! Brett's back!" or "Hey, where's Brett?" or stuff like that. So I forget yeah, well, her name. You've also got a fan that calls you Jim Flannery, a carrot, and tells us to get you off the podcast. <laughs> so, I mean... Yes, but that's 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 not a fan. That's a troll, and that person. Um, I'd love for that person to come on so we can verbally that, that's do actually to... that's actually Brevan's anonymous account, bro. I'm not even joking. Yeah, I don't imagine Michael. What, what Michael? Oh, what? Yeah, but Brevan's I'm, actually anyways. Michael. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, keyboard warriors, they're fine. We need keyboard warriors. Uh, it's it's all it's all fun and banter, okay? After after Brett's comments like that, I expect Michael to drop about six comments because this guy is in every <laughs> single video. He doesn't miss the video, but, man. Anyway, 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 Brett, your favorite player gone, replaced by a fullback. I mean, you just don't know. You just don't know at this point. Uh, what do you think? Before we go into his replacement, France Malherbe. Out. Yeah, I'm. I'm obviously devastated. I want this guy to make 120,000 caps for the box, um, starting all of them. I honestly think that I've never seen a better tight head prop in my whole existence of watching rugby. So I'm just obviously we all know I'm a big Franz Malherbe fan, um, but it is what it is. Hopefully, it's a quick recovery because I kind of need him at my Stormers team because three major injuries to three Springboks in a team that's already playing like dog shit. That's just oh devastating. It, it just can't get worse. It just can't it literally. Worse. You think about what was the worst thing that could possibly happen to the Springboks right before that Glasgow game and you said oh, not to the Springboks, to the Stormers and it's like Damien Willems get injured and Franz Malherbe would get injured. Wow, wow! It's just depressing. Brevan, what are you? Th- what's your thoughts on on Franci gone? It's it's a it's a cuck one. Let's be real. It's not <laughs> Lasher. Um, <laughs> there's not, not much more to say about it. You know, um, it's not great. And also, I, I, obviously, Rusty is like the goat, but I don't understand that replacement. I, like, obviously, Jordan's been doing well-ish. I think for the Sharks recently. But I still don't get the replacement. I'll it's it's a stopgap. It's literally just a stopgap. 
Um, I can't see Hendrickson playing a single game. I can't see him playing a single minute unless Marnie somehow, right, butchers every single ball he touches, everything, and he will never start a game again. Then they might go Andre Pollard for 80 minutes, but then Andre Pollard also needs to butcher it, and then they'll give John and Hendricks an opportunity. But what I think this gives a great opportunity for is someone that we have been calling for, for for quite a while, and we have said, listen, he's just unlucky that he's playing for the Springboks. Thomas Tutoy, I think he plays two out of the three games now. He's been sensational. He can play on both sides. So we'll probably see the likes of Oxen Che, Bungi Manami and Thomas Dutoy in the starting lineup. And I'm 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 super here for it. Super here for it. No. Vincent Koch will start. No, 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 he won't. No, he won't. Vincent Koch will start, and I'll tell you why. Um he knows he he's familiar with every single system. They only have a week and a half. There's no time to go scrum five thousand times now get accustomed to um, a starting role with Bongi and Ox now. Um, when Ox literally plays with Bongi at the Sharks and he's, and he's been in the system for the longest. So just with that like logic, I think the Cox So you just like the pure, pure Sharks front three. I guess, so, but you still believe Thomas Detoy goes onto the bench then with... 100%. 100%. Because Thomas Detoy can play loose and tight set prop. He's a specialist mm. in both. So it's not... Yeah, I, I kind of just forgot that the whole Sharks front row is there. Yeah, that probably makes sense. I just thought like Vincent Koch is is that guy, is the same as Quacher Smith and Grant Williams, where they just like, they slot on them straight onto the bench. Because uh, we know the impact. <laughs> He's played with with, with uh, Malcolm Marks for years and years and years for, for, for the Springboks now. But obviously that makes sense. I kind of forgot when I, when I said my no that... Uh, that came through. Do you predict the same thing, uh, Brevan, or are you going with Thomas Tutoy to actually get the start? Nah, I think they'll go with the Sharks front three. Uh, Does it really matter, I mean, though? The, the chemistry there is through the roof, so why would you not want to just keep it that way? Yeah. And then coming off the bench, you have Thomas Tutoy. Uh, Malcolm Marks and Karastena come. Yeah, exactly. So, And I think those three together can work very well. So... Mm. Even though France my habit is a huge miss, luckily we have depth in this country. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah, you know? and luckily we're not really playing any physical teams, really. Like, <laughs> like obviously it, it's not nice it's losing France my habit, but is he that big of a loss? Like, we yes, were anyway going to have scrum dominance, right? But time will tell. Yeah. I don't, okay. I don't know. I don't know a Springbok scrum without France Malab. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. What do, what do we think of of Jordan Hendricks coming in? Right, because like, I don't I don't know. Is do, do we think he's coming in as a ten? Does he come in because he's not coming in as a fifteen? They've still got the two fifteens there. Um, if he plays, it'll probably be at ten. But then I'm like, well, he got dropped from the ten at the Lions. You didn't even have a ten. He played on inside center, then he played at 15. I mean, the guy's probably coming in as a backup 10, but he's not going to play at all, in my opinion. I just think it's a stopgap. We, did we not want to pick someone else? What was going on there? Oh, I also don't understand the selection. I'm guessing it's just a full the squad kind of selection. I, I don't see where he would get game time. Um, but I personally, why would you have not, just from my point of view, why wouldn't you have, um, I mean, it gives you options, right? Obviously, they replaced Willemsen with the forward. So maybe that's why they've gone uh, Franz Mahaba with the back. I mean, that could be a reasoning. But I personally would have just gone with another prop. Given someone, even though they may not have got game time per se, put them in the system, mm -hmm. you know. I, I just, Jordan Hendrickson, I still think... There's a lot to 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 work on there, in my opinion. But that yeah, that's just me. Yeah, I think I think Willems, uh, um, Jordan Hendricks uh, benches two of the three games as utility back. If they go for a six-two split, he's the he's the bench back. He plays ten, twelve, and fifteen. He can play wing, and he's got a sixty-five meter kick on him. Jordan Hendricks is going to play more than you guys think because of his versatility. 
and his recent form is top notch and his aggression has picked up a lot. The guy's going to play. Watch, watch this space. He might play, but I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather have like, like we did in the World Cup. I'd rather have Vili Larue as, as like the player twenty three. If you're going to start Fassi, for instance, have Vili on the bench. Vili's got the experience to slot in anyway. I mean, why not? I, I just think Andre Pollard takes that twenty three jersey, and I think Marni Lubok starts. That's. Basically, yeah, we'll have to judge that on each game. We can't say actually it's it's hypotheticals. Obviously, that's all Safas and scripted is all about. Um, but yeah, I I think he plays more than we think um, because Valimse is out. Maybe we even go five three back to five three. Did we or just? To, is, sorry, just to go back. Oh. Are we just like fixed on it's going to be Thomas the Toy or do we see Volko Lowe maybe coming in? Nah, Thomas the Toy deserves it. Like, I'm a Paul's guy, but mm, I think Thomas the Toy, they both really deserve it. But Thomas the Toy has been grafting. I mean, he's been mm. so good in the Prem. Because people have and, been calling for Volko when he was not selected. That's how good Volko yeah. has also been. But, yeah, I just think. I mean, you getting? I think you're getting a like for like play with those two. They're both very good at scrummaging. I just think Thomas the Toy may be a tad better. Uh, mm. I, I, I have a lot of respect for the two, but yeah, um, I think maybe against Wales or or I don't know. I, I don't see much rotation happening in these two games. If there is rotation, Wales will be the game. But yeah, I actually don't know. I can't give a I, definitive answer. Yeah, I, I, I think that it's going to be... reason why I say I think it's going to be Thomas the Toy is because I think he's flourishing in the Northern Hemisphere. He's a, one of the greater, one of the better players in the Prem. Um, those conditions suit him to the T. Yeah. When the Bulls travel, Wilco Lowe sometimes struggles um, under those conditions. Um, takes him a while to warm up, literally. Um, maybe, but um, yeah, I think that those conditions it will be it wouldn't make sense for me to not play Thomas the Toy. He plays there, he plays mm. with those with those people, um, against those people. It, it just he he adds value on, on inside scoops on how to target players, he adds value on the fact that he's played there. He adds value that he's actually on probably the best form of his life. Um, it would be unfair and wouldn't be wouldn't make sense yep. if he. Yeah, yep. I fully agree. I fully agree. Uh, anyway, that that that's basically it for 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 the spring box right now. But I wanted to to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on. I heard some news yesterday that the storm is honestly looking at getting rid of. Good old John Dobbo, uh, but they are looking to bring in. Oh my word! I just forgot Johan Ackerman. That would be a massive. That would be massive. So this Thomas made, made a statement and said that's false, fake news. Oh really? Yes. What a bummer! I love Dobbo, but like I've been a fan. I've called for Johan Ackerman before Rossi to go be and be be the Springbok coach. Did we see Monsters' little sacking that happened today? Yeah. Listen, listen. There was actually a guy in the comment section, uh, Mark Macken, right? And he said, casual, substitute your rant on the Stormers with Monster. And that's how, how many feel in Ireland about Monster, right? Because I was very passionate during my rant. And I was having a little think of it and I was like, that's true. That's very true because we're in this exact same boat. Imagine the drop off of Munster. It's the exact same thing as the Stormers. Are they higher up on the table than us? Though? No, they're one above you. That's it. The oh. exact same, the exact same position. Really, let me let me tell you what I, I I actually for once in my life agreed with what Joel Stransky had to say on the Stormers' last selections. Yes, you have superstars. But why are you playing your best fullback at inside center? Why are you playing your best 13 on the right wing? Um, why, 
all these changes that were made, yes, you have these superstars, but they're not specialized in that position. Um, and mm -hmm. there I actually completely agree because um, if I, th I feel like a 10 and a 15 can switch, but a 10 and a 12 can't switch and a 13 and a wing can't switch. I, that's, it just doesn't work for me. Um, yeah. So no, but I, that, that's exactly what we saw with Amen and Creel, right? As the center combination. Because both of them are superstars in that position, but just yeah. the slight differences in it costs you games. Like that makes sense. So, what what would your opinion be? Do you think the Stormers just has to sacrifice one when it comes to Sasha being fit, um, Marnie being fit, Damian Willemse being fit, and uh, on form Wari Kalant as well? No. So the problem for me is uh, a Wari Kalant does all these moments of brilliance, like um, how people are defending Kalant at this point is he would kick a grubber or whatever straight into a player's hand, the player would score. And then the very next time he'd get the ball, he'd step three oaks, give this fancy pass or a stab a grubber through and we'll score. And then people will praise that moment. But mm -hmm. it's like for like, you just conceded, you just gave away a try. Yes, you scored, made or created a try, but that I'd, I'd take that out and tell him, stop that nonsense. It's not what you're here for. Um, and then when he's better, he can come off the bench. But no, Damien Willemse should have started at 15 with Marnie Leboc being there. The same center pairing, build a continuity. That's Okay, what but if Sasha's back, that, that's my point. Like, if you have all those guys not injured, you have Sasha available, you have Damien Willemse available, Wari Kalant available, and Marnie Leboc available, and you have to split them between 10 and 15, right? Because then you kind of want to play Dan Dupe at inside center and Ruan Nala at outside center. What do you do? You just sacrifice the one. That's no, that's what I mean. Yes, one goes to the bench. So either Marnie and Sasha are the two tens starting and benching. Um, Damien Willems at fullback and Warwick Holland goes to place for Western Province. Look, if you no, no, seriously, like if you look at the best teams in the world in any sport, rotation is key, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. you have your most important player. Um, for example, I believe Sasha. I mean, this is just my opinion from an outside point of view. I believe Sasha is the 10 that should take the Stormers forward, and that's just my opinion. However, I still think Marnie does get games in that team where Sasha can fall to them, the bench. Yeah. Yeah, where Sasha can fall to the bench because we know what he can do. They can both bring something off the bench, and it's not that deep. I mean, over the years, Rossi has made this, this thing that the bench is actually typically a bit more even important than your starting 15. So people yep. shouldn't look at the bench like, oh my goodness, he's benched. I mean, I hate that logic now these days. Like, oh my goodness, I'm benched. Like, so you have something to bring Bro, off these the bench. players come on at about 45 to 50 minutes. They play this yeah. nearly the same amount. I think just my point is like, there's no issues in having Marnie sit on the bench or having Sasha sit on the bench. Mm. You know, it's it's not like it's it's that much of a problem. So you guys yeah. actually have so many weapons at your disposal. It just needs to be used correctly. You know. So, yeah. 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 Oh, I mean, if I had the option, right, and I could only play Marnie or Sasha, I'd play Sasha all all the away games and Marnie at home. Marnie at home is just a different breed. And I feel like Marnie just gets flustered a bit away from him, which kind of makes me scared for, for the Springboks team. But I mean, anyway, you know, listen, there's actually some international rugby this weekend. I just quickly wanted to know you guys' opinions on, oh, before we go to international rugby, Brevan, ach, Brett, because it's still your team, right? I know you just said it's false and it's fake news. But if it wasn't, and Johan Ackerman said, listen, I'll come into a consulting job. Would you like that? Would you enjoy that? Do you think the, the Stormers are getting a bit too complacent? Like I saw someone in the comment section once again um, saying, listen, it, it frustrates them to see Dobbo making jokes and laughing after, after games where you put out a performance like that. And obviously, we all love Dobbo and he's a great personality. But at some point, you got to realize, listen, shit's eating the fan at the moment. What's your thoughts yeah. on maybe Ackerman coming in? I would like Ackerman to come in for as the same role that Jock Minobert is playing at Leinster. Um, that, that, that for me would work very well because I feel like Dobbo is still the man to take Stormers forward. He's a great coach. 
I do agree that because I feel the same way after the games when he's joking about stuff like that. Um, the last coach that I saw in international sport or any sport that laughed after a game was Eric Ten Hag and he got sacked the very next day. So um, I wouldn't chance stuff like that. Your job's not secure because you won a URC three years ago. Um, so I think that he needs to lit literally either reinvent his team because I saw the coaching box against Leinster. He had um, bloody half the bench in the coaching box with him wearing coaches' shirts. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Leinster? Uh, ach, no, man. Um, against, against Glasgow? Uh, Glasgow. Oh, my word. A oh, Brocky. Oh, Brocky. No, actually, yeah. Like, yeah. He had Divenacher in the in the coaching box with him. Um, yeah, can't remember who else there, but like we, we see this Dwayne Vermeulen in the World Cup one time in the coaches box, and all of a sudden every single player is a coach. Like it's ridiculous. You have your yes. coaches. Use your coaches. They are your coaches, right? Not every guy that you play with is going to be a coach. Like it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like I would find it odd to. A guy that I just played with that I see make mistakes on the same field as me, all of a sudden one, wanting to tell me what to do. Like, yeah. even when he's not that expensive. Devil Devenach played for Benetton. He's not even a Springbok. Oh, are you kidding me? That is what I'm talking about, bro. It's it, This is bullshit. It's it's up the trash. I'm, okay, I don't want to rant again. I don't want to rant again. I don't want to rant again. Brevan, what's your thoughts on it before we go on to internationals? No, um, I'm with Brett. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have much more to say. Uh, let's move on to some internationals. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Listen, Steve Borthwick has announced his squad today. Obviously, this episode is only coming out on Wednesday. Yeah. Right? But I, I don't know what the mindset was, right? But Because when the, when the Springboks usually announce their team on a, on a Thursday, it's like, well, holy shit. How are we stopping that? But England's done it. <laughs> And I'm like, well, the lineup, as Brett always mentioned, is I was just going from 15 to 9 and then from 1 to 8. And then you look at that forwards and I'm like, well, they're going to get smashed. They will not win a single scrum. They will not even dream of it. So, it's not a good team in my opinion. <laughs> so, obviously, you, you guys know I have a, a mate that lives in the UK. He was here, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, I get this message, right? And it's like... I'm effing pissed. Okay. That's the first message. Then What's he's effing? like, you know what that is. I'm not going to, whatever. Um, <laughs> the next message, Borthwick's an absolute spanner. Okay. Then he's like, I'm like, why? Because I'm obviously driving. He's like, that team he's just put out is horrendous. Then he sends a picture of the team and he's like, the, the crosses are my big worries. There's like six crosses. And then he just goes off on. Um, on the team, who he would replace, whatever. And then he's like, I'm like, um, I was like, when did you guys start announcing teams on Tuesdays? He's like, Steve just wants to be Russie. That and his stupid 6 2 split. <laughs> <laughs> bro, like, announcing your team on the same day as the box don't make you better, bro. Like, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> I mean, let, let's go through the team, right? And, and starting off, it's, it's Brett's favorite player. Brett ranted about this guy watching a Six Nations documentary of him eating a burrito in a car. It's <laughs> 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 game. But <laughs> us laughing just tells you all about. Imagine England beat us, right? And this is our reaction to their team. I'm actually crying. Ellis Genge, Jamie George, and Will Stewart. Those guys are going up against. Cody Taylor, right, who I, I said is one of the top hookers in the world, Ethan De Groot and Tyrell Lomax, they will see the inside of their guts. I'm not even joking. These guys will get absolutely blistered. Brent? Yeah. yeah, I actually just want to go back to that, that part. Like, I stopped watching the Six Nations documentary because they show... People chewing like animals on the show, like um, um, I'm gonna go scrum now. Um, like that is just super disgusting. And then also on that topic of the of the 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 
one, two, three, blows my mind. Like, are you that stupid? You don't count like that. You count 15 to 1. Gee whiz, just... Or even 1 to 15, I don't even, it doesn't, it feels so weird reading Marcus Smith, Ben Spencer, Ellis Gange, Jamie George. Like, what is going on? Okay, Mario Torje goes into the four and and George Martin, which is fair enough. Yeah, sorry, Brett. Yeah, can actually, can somebody just explain to us the logic behind naming it like, like that? Because surely nobody's that stupid by doing that on purpose. Surely not. No. Can't okay, be. carry on with your team. Well, when it comes to the, the locks, they're pretty decent. Like, that George Martin, he's a player. He's a player and a half. I like that guy. And Chandler Cunningham South, decent. Tom Curry, what is this guy doing back there? I've never seen... This guy's probably had, like, two or three good games since 2019. Where is Sam Undiel? What are you doing? What is this guy doing? Yeah, He's not I even in the team. Yeah. I don't know, bro. I, I don't know about their injuries or anything like that. So I actually can't like say they've just left them out because they've left them out. So but yeah, I mean it's it's I mean if, if one of their fans is really livid with that team, then I guess it would be normal for us to be having this reaction as well, you know? So yeah. yeah um, I mean, yeah. I'm on. A, I'm on a WhatsApp group chat with a, with a couple of English people, and they are not happy. I mean, this is this is a silly team. It's not. It's it's it reeks. It absolutely reeks. And to be fair, right? I don't even think New Zealand played. I know they smashed Japan, but they didn't play great. Like this game might be a fart fest. Didn't New Zealand also announce their team? Uh, I haven't seen New Zealand. No, team, no, no, no. Go no, look, go like. look. I think okay, Australia, New Zealand, and England have been, uh, announced their teams. Let me check. No, no, I can't see it. Okay, no, everything good. I just is still is still highlights on the Japan game, but obviously Cam Roy got back. Um, he looked good. Uh, yeah, Billy Proctor. They finally played him. He looked outstanding. But uh, yeah, the, the big boy is obviously missing. But I mean, is is this? I know they smashed him, sixty-four points to nineteen, right? But Japan was in that game for a long, long time, for a large part of the game. Yeah, that score doesn't reflect the game for me. I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like Japan got uh, played that much as the score would dictate. I, it was weird for me. Yeah, everyone said like that that you know that watched the game. They were saying that um, even though the score looks the way it does, like New Zealand in that second half were abysmal. Apparently, like they were. I mean, I can't say I watched the game, but um, I just heard that they were shocking. And the, the scoreline technically just was it was a moment in the game where they just had all the momentum, and that that's how they got their points. You know, so. That's, that's the yeah, thing. The right? Blacks like, are still struggling, man. Yeah. Uh, that's you know? the thing. Everyone's talking about the second half being a abysmal performance, yet that's where they got all their points. And in the first half, it was extremely close again. You know, like, so it's, it's not mm -hmm. a convincing performance at all. I've seen a couple of content creators talk about that game, like from New Zealand. None of them happy. I haven't heard a single New Zealander happy of the 64 point whacking on, on Japan. I mean, obviously, we'll we'll talk about this on Friday a bit more. But what's our early predictions at the Alien Stadium? <laughs> um, before we argue about predictions, I just want to read a stat that my my friend also told me, and I was like, "This can't be true." But if he's saying it, I'll believe him. Um, so he says, "Slade's of Henry Slade being in that team is the worst of them all. He's been terribly inconsistent for for England." And he's only played 54 minutes of rugby since July. 54 Rug and is starting. That's okay. mental. 54 I've never minutes. rated Slade. I've never rated Slade. I feel like he's got one of the worst set of hands in world rugby. That oak knocks a lot. Well, it, now it's the battle of the trash outside centers because it's definitely not going to be Billy Proctor out there. They're going to play Rico Yoni. 
at I don't rate him at all as an outside center. He's had one one or two good games. I, I thought he was very good in that first game against South Africa. Like, he actually looked pretty solid. Other than that, that guy's been absolute dog at, at outside center. So, him versus Henry Slade, the battle of the shit, who comes out on top. Uh, yeah. Do we have anything else to add, or do we just wrap I it mean, up? Reverend, do you want to go start? I, yeah, I need to, but I just want to add... <laughs> Um, if if this were, if if Borthwick had uh, Felix Jones at his disposal, he'd get rid of a lot of people. He'd bring in, according to my mates, Borthwick's bringing it brought in his own mates, basically. Like it's a favoritism thing, kind of show there. Um, I genuinely think England, the way they performed in in it was July, eh? it wasn't June. Anyway, against New Zealand in July, I genuinely think they had a great shot at winning this game. Like, superb shot. And mm -hmm. now I'm thinking everyone's so negative after such a good series, but I can see why, because it's just gone to yeah. absolute shit with, with the, the management and everything. So, yeah, I actually can't call Bro, this Bro, they've game, changed it from England rugby. Yeah. They've changed it from England, England rugby to jobs for the boys. It is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> having a defen defense coach on a Zoom call, by the way, we forgot to even mention this. Firstly, please do remember to like and subscribe. I know it's at the end. But unfortunately, we will be looking for another streaming service. So this might be one of the final times you see us like that in a row because they're extorting us out here on StreamYard. So we'll either move over to Zoom or to Podcast or, or whatever. Right? But 800, 800 bucks out of the pocket every month. Wow, I thought it was like 400 <laughs> killing us boys are killing us <sighs> or if you want to donate to the channel please do so somehow <laughs> <laughs> sign up with code bit code casual on betway thank you <laughs> or bread burn or bread I don't I, do it. no i don't do it so yeah you guys take Reven, that Reven doesn't gamble. okay anyway we'll wrap it up everyone thank you for watching this was truly an unfiltered and unscripted episode of Safas Unscripted. Thank you. Goodbye. Fight, fight.